What is going on YouTube? Hit back making another brand new Crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, as well as the S&P 500. As you guys know, we like to do a different cryptocurrency here on the channel every single week with your guys' help, of course. So definitely comment your favorite altcoin in the comment section down below. I will be picking one lucky person and reviewing their cryptocurrency in next week's videos. More importantly, what we're going to be looking at in today's episode is the recent sideways trending uh, that the markets are pretty much forming across the board. We're seeing a lot of these major cryptocurrencies uh, start to consolidate out sideways as they were rejected from their top resistance levels on pretty much all the major cryptocurrencies and it's ultimately signaling what I believe is a flag to correct lower. Now, I don't want that to uh, spread any FUD, but there are big opportunities for us to obviously short the market to the downside and I just want to show you a general overview price prediction of where exactly I think this market is going to go you know where it's going to go to as well as showing you guys a comparison of what happened in 2017 2018 on Bitcoin and how that actually correlates to what's happening right now so if you guys are interested in learning anything about that definitely stick around today's video is also sponsored by Disciplina so for those that don't remember what Disciplina is it's basically a way for employees uh to find recruiters or vice versa, recruiters to find potential candidates for employees. Um, and it is something that is on the blockchain and crypto space. It's a new company. So definitely stick around to the end of today's video if you wanna learn a little bit more about them. Otherwise, if you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's jump into today's episode. All right, so the first thing to start off with, I guess, is just looking at the general uh, current coin market cap. Then I'll jump into some of the other things. As you can see, top 10 cryptos, everything is down. Overall market down 2.2%. Nothing really like absurd in regards to correction, but I don't think we're looking good now. Now, I've spoken to a few people here and there, and a lot of people think that this is it, and there are other people, you know, everyone's on the fence right now thinking that this is the bottom and we're gonna head up. Now, uh, the only thing that I can really compare, because nobody knows what's gonna happen moving forward, is based off how I was feeling as well as what I saw and, and lived through back in 2017, 2018, and that's what I wanna talk about with you guys today. So we're gonna look at Bitcoin, we're gonna talk about XRP, because there are some big moves coming very soon. As we know, there are some critical support levels that we know if they are broken, we are going to short. Now, for those that are questioning when to buy in, we discussed that I don't, we don't like, or me specifically, I don't like to buy in when we're trading inside channels here. So there's clearly a price ceiling at 40,000 and a price floor at 30,000. And we discussed that if markets start to consolidate inside in the middle of these of this channel right here, we don't buy in we don't sell off. It's just not something we like to get involved in. Obviously, if our stop loss triggers, then we get sold off, but we don't like to trade inside of here because it's way too risky and it cuts profit by quite a bit. So what I'd be waiting for is obviously if we were to retest or get closer to $40,000, if we broke above or below, that's when we'd buy in or sell short, vice versa for the bottom support here, 30K, which looks like we're going to be heading back down to, which I believe is where we're going to be heading back down to that's the next target in about a day or two if not today where we're going to be retesting bottom support here and obviously if we come back down and at some point let's say tomorrow we retest 30k we uh, wick below it and then close back above there's a good chance I'll buy in and long it to the upside and we'll discuss more about that when it does happen but if we close the daily below our uptrend we know to short it because there's a bigger chance of reversal these are major 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 support and resistance levels that if things are going to be broken or move or action is going to form at these you know support and resistance levels there's going to be a big volume burst regardless of direction and it's going to make a significant drop or correction back to the upside which will then capitalize on so i'm not worried about the direction the markets are going to be moving to i'm just waiting patiently for retesting of either direction on the price. Now, you you guys should ultimately be doing that too, and obviously using BitYard to leverage trade your cryptos, which we'll talk about more a little later. But obviously, I definitely recommend it. I did link uh, BitYard in the description. Now, XRP is in a very similar boat, but I wouldn't advise jumping into XRP the second we get confirmation of a breach um, below that 60 cent level. Obviously, you can see for right now, the drop for X or for Bitcoin 
brings us down to, and I would like to just show you guys here, I just got to find our charts, wherever that is. I don't know why I'm having trouble finding it. Um, I need the price level. Where is it? Okay, the price range is right here. So from the current drop from 32, it to uh, bottom support, it's about 6.9%. On XRP, a 6.9% drop would probably send us over to, let's see, 6.9, right about here. So 6.9% really isn't much lower. It, I can probably pull this down ever so slightly if I wanted to. So if I was to do that, it would look something along the lines of this. That's pretty much where we're gonna find support. So if we see prices come back down to this support level, it's about a 6.9% drop, that's where we would uh, potentially buy in to short the market. The same thing would act with Bitcoin as it would with XRP. So bottom support is confirmed at about 57%. If you really wanted to play it safe, you could probably swing this even lower and call it right here at about 54, but this is safe to say right here. And obviously we'll confirm a break below 57 right here let me just pull this down a little bit lower a break below this level right here would pretty much be the same time bitcoin breaks bearish below thirty thousand dollars and they'll both be a good opportunity to short the market so we can compare bitcoin to xrp both at those uh similar price levels now more importantly what i wanted to show you guys was obviously uh right here so if we pull up bitcoin as we've had i want to just you know scroll take a trip down memory lane and fly back to 2017 which we have right here as you guys can see this is what happened in 2017 into 2018 so what we can then do is pull up the charts and we pull up a bars pattern which is really nice and i like using this quite often and then we can retrace memory lane right here you can see right now we've lifted the historical price graph I will now float ourselves back over to 2021 and we're gonna throw this on and we're gonna manipulate the chart to match the same volume, but obviously price fluctuations, percentage drops or increases should be about historically the same. So notice we'll have a general direction of where we're going to. Now, I don't know why this happens that often, but they do look fairly similar. And I do wanna show you guys what I mean, especially if we just map out the top here. Um, it's gonna be a hard overlay but just bear with as we kind of trace out what exactly is going on here. All right, now look at this. Maybe we consider it like that. This should look about right. Okay, so in retrospect, you can see where the double top would form and where we've started to correct lower. I would like to extend it out a little more so we get that better view. Okay, just like this. Here we go. All right, so you can see where that double top formed right here. You can see how originally back in 2017, 2018, we had one confirmation, two confirmation, and then we started to drop lower, and then we came back up. Now notice here, I'll draw it out for us. So we had confirmation, confirmation, correction, and then we went back up. Notice on the pattern right here, we had confirmation, confirmation, correction, and then we went right back up. It's a exact identical pattern, one and two. Same thing are happening. And then you can see from this point on, we corrected lower. From this point on, we corrected lower. Now what we're looking for is some more consolidation and then falling lower. So we could easily see prices come back up, somewhat create that lower high, that, that, that downtrend that we've been referring to. So you can see on the price currently, we were looking for some sort of lower high formation, a third confirmation. We had one, two, we were looking for a third. Obviously, we haven't had that right just yet, but once we came back up, we confirmed the third confirmation for Bitcoin right here. As you guys can see, this was one, two, and then three. So we haven't confirmed that just yet. So that's why I constantly believe at some point prices are should and should break up and retest that moving average, which will be right around here. Prices will probably sink to about 40K. And that's going to be a problem zone. We've had opportunities to move all the way up to like $50,000, but since then we've corrected lower. And I just want to show you guys what exactly the future would look like. Uh, the big correction lower, which we're kind of experiencing right now. Just understand this is about bottom and then we correct it back up. So I'm waiting for maybe a little more volume, but then ultimately we do go lower. It does happen. 
Um, hopefully, we're a little uh, quicker than what happened in 2017, 2018. Granted that there's a lot more people involved and invested into markets like this, but ultimately, I do believe we are going to see some sort of respectful correction back downwards after we see maybe a small move to the upside. But regardless, that's why we have confirmation, resistance, and supports. But as you guys can tell, markets since $51,000 have slowly but surely reversed downwards. We've seen the bearish cross on a moving average on the daily. And they're both pulling ourselves down. Eventually, the moving average is going to level out with $40,000 resistance. What does that mean for us? That means the highest we're pretty much going to go is a retest of 40 k and that would be it. It used to be the opportunity here was we could come back up and retest 47 k And back here, we could retest like 50 k But as time goes on, moving averages is going to lower. And it's going to allow us to basically use 40 k as that means of resistance correct lower and that will obviously be the lower high the third confirmation that we're waiting for so we could easily see movement back up i wouldn't jump the gun just yet obviously if we can confirm retest of 30k we hold above here then maybe we'll start to swing back up to 40k that's what we're looking for but if we confirm break below here expect to see consolidation downwards um, but that's pretty much it everything really relies on this support and this resistance and that can plan itself with every crypto here with xrp xrp we have the same exact pattern we have a downtrend right here for the most part and if support is broken on 58 cents there's a good chance we're going to correct back down to 26 and we know if we break bearish or break bullish we'll probably come back up to retest at most a dollar which is now where that moving average is pretty much confirming that we would have a higher low formation or lower high formation and we could probably draw it like this that'd be another downtrend right there so i'm going to leave this as we've had it and that's pretty much what we're looking at ethereum as some sort of open descending fractal it's like an open funnel which is odd, um, you know, an open descending fractal. We have prices retesting, and, and it seems like we retested the top of the moving average and the downtrend here, and we're probably going to start to reverse lower. And I do believe we'll probably see that confirmation break above, uh, below 1850 fairly short, you know, uh, shortly, very soon. So I wouldn't be surprised if we reverse below that, retest 1300, so on and so forth. Uh, Bitcoin, you know, we talked about Litecoin, same descending fractal prices are not looking good. The goal is to hopefully, you know, confirm above these support levels and break back up, but it doesn't seem that likely. And then as for the S&P 500, we are just killing it, absolutely killing it. Since, uh, you know, COVID happened, it really just freaking blows my mind. I mean, if you invested in after that major correction with COVID, and you put your money into the stock market since the beginning of COVID, you would be up 100%. Your, anything you've put in would double. I wanna give a huge shout out to Disciplina again for sponsoring today's episode. So hopefully you guys remember the past couple of weeks we've been talking about Disciplina and you know, every some videos, but um, basically for those that want a quick refresh, their project is the first multifunctional blockchain to create verified personal profiles based on academic and professional achievements. Their project aims to make quality changes in the field of education and recruiting, as well as aid in the effective use of the blockchain technologies. They will store the whole history of academic achievement of a person in blockchain generating their personal score. They store confidential information such as courses, student tasks, grades, and test results, which results in allowing recruiters to simplify their candidate search by their fields of expertise and their skills required. So hopefully you guys remember, but last week we talked about the Disciplina LP Reward Program, but today I have some insights directly from the Disciplina team about the program rules that I'd like to share with you. So Disciplina team is developing the smart contract that would allow users to stake their DSCPL LP tokens and get rewards. And this is cool because all the users are welcome to add their DSCPL USDT liquidity to the pancake swap pool and get their LP tokens. Afterwards, those LP tokens could be staked on the contract of the LP reward program. And then after staking, tokens get locked and you begin involving in the staking. So while you are holding the stake on the contract, you will earn points for the time spent on the contract. One point corresponds to the one block time. And the more time you spend on the contract, the more points you obviously get in return. Now the reward distribution is held in the end of each round and the duration of the round is fixed. So that means that the reward is distributed between all the participating users proportionally to the time they spent on the contract and to their stake amount. 
So if you decide to withdraw your LP tokens before the end of the round, obviously you won't be rewarded with that and your points will be reset to zero. Now the Disciplina team says that the longer you stay on the contract, the better reward you will get. So feel free to get your DSCPL tokens on BEX, you know, and some other exchanges like XData and PancakeSwap and add your liquidity to the PancakeSwap pool, which I also linked in the description if you guys wanted to check out. Otherwise, get your LP tokens earlier to get better gains by staking them on the LP reward program contract as soon as possible, and that would provide you with obviously better rewards and higher profit. The Disciplina team claims to start the program very soon, so definitely be on the lookout and I'll give you updates when that comes. Otherwise, huge shout out to Disciplina for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode. Peace.